Joey Blevins. Welcome to Mysteries and Histories. In this episode here, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about Bob Gimlin. Okay, now I have nothing against Bob Gimlin. When I did my research on the Patterson Gimlin Bigfoot film, I have tried to make contact with him on quite a few occasions. I called his house. I have spoken to his wife one time. I left a message with her and my phone number to Bob to ask him, can he contact me? Because some questions I wanted to ask <clears throat> and believe and in me, I believe in going straight to the source and ask them themselves instead of, you know, hearsay or anything else. Like I did, I talked to Bob Hieronymus on the phone. I talked to uh, Mr. Philip Morris on the phone. I talked to a lot of people behind the scenes of it on the phone as well and everything else on a Patterson Gimlin Bigfoot film. However, as years go by, people always want to point out facts about what and, you know, flaws and everything else in Bob Hieronymus' story, like, but well, he don't know how to get to the location. Or you can't believe what he says, even though he did take two polygraphs and he did pass both both of them. But they say, well, you can't do that because it's not accurate and everything. So always making up excuses on when it comes to Bob Hieronymus' story. But when there's other facts showing on Bob Gimlin's story, we're not allowed to ask them questions. You know, if there's a flaw in it, say, hey, why is this? Because every time something was mentioned when it comes to Bob Gimlin and his story, if you know, hey, this is not matching up or anything, they say, well, you got to understand he's older now and everything else like that, you know. So I take that consideration, but you also got to realize it also works for Bob Hieronymus as well. You know, that was years ago. But they don't want to use that only when it comes to Bob uh, Gimlin. They'll use it, but when it comes to Bob Hieronymus, that's no excuse. And that's not how you do real research when it comes to any type of research that you do. So what I want to do here is I want to play <clears throat> a couple of um, interviews that Bob Gimlin was in. So you can see, you can hear for yourself, this is Bob Gimlin's words. It's not my words or anybody else's words or anything else. Uh, one interview was done some years ago on, I think, a uh, program called X Factor where, you know, they was going and digging into the Patterson and Gimlin Bigfoot film and stuff like that. That's one interview. And the other interview was done in 2010, I think it was, 2010. It was taken around there. The, the interview was up there. It was with Bob Gimlin and uh, John Green. But they took it down because there's some things that he said in it that I guess they didn't want to get out, so they took that interview down, but I did have a copy of that interview. So instead of just keep on talking and talking, I'm going to first play the one from X Factor, from uh, Bob Gimlin's interview, on what he thought about, you know, the Bigfoot, so, in the film. So let's when listen When I to first it. saw this thing, it was just like the, the adrenaline flu, you know, I mean, I was... I was shocked, excited, uh, just like Ollie, then they do exist, you know. It was a fascinating call, but there was one big question. Do you still think that what you saw was an animal? Well, I've thought about this many, many times over the years. At one time in my life, right shortly after the film footage, I was totally convinced that no one could fool me. And, of course, I'm an older man now, and I see a lot of things, and I think there could have been a possibility. But it would have had to have been really well planned by Roger. And I feel that they would have had to have been very, very careful, because I had a 30 6 loaded with 180 grain bullets. And had that thing have turned and rushed me, I would have shot it. So I feel that if that was a hoax, Somebody was taking an awful big chance with their life. So that's one part of the uh, interview that uh, Bob Gimlin done. He said he's older now and he's wiser. And he's seen a lot of things. Now, it could have been a hoax. Okay, now he says it could have been a hoax. Okay, when I see something, I have my own experience, which I'm going to make a video about that, about the Bigfoot I've seen. I'm not going to say it was a hoax, and I'm not going to even apply that it was a hoax, or even say, you know, it could have been, because I know I'm 100% guaranteed what I saw was real. But I'll talk about that in my other video. But here we have Bob Gimlin starting to think, was it a hoax or not? Or was he giving out 
information that it was a hoax, but he just didn't want to say it all the way. He just applied that it was a hoax. So later on down the road, that when it does come out as a hoax, then, you know, he says, well, you know, I thought it was a hoax myself, but, you know, that's how it, that's how it goes when people's stories change as well. But here we go. We hear Bob Gamlin says it could have been a hoax. Okay. But people's not going to point this out. Okay. They're not going to ask Bob Gimlin or come up to Bob Gimlin or even at a conference or anything else. Say, hey, Bob, remember when you was on this program here and you said it could have been a hoax? Why did you say that? Okay. They won't ask that question. So here's another one. Like I said, another interview to Bob Gimlin done that I'm going to play for you. So you can hear out his own words about the camera and how, you know, because as we're told now, keep in mind, we're told there was only two men there, Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin. Now, who was filming Roger Patterson at the PG film site? Now, I pointed out, and I have the evidence, and I showed the evidence in my book, uh, Patterson and Gimlin Bigfoot Film, 1967. In that book, I show that the man... Bob Gimlin was not seen in a film except for that one time when he was hiding behind a brush. So who was actually filming Roger Patterson? Okay. Now, here, let's go ahead and listen to this interview here first, and then we'll go into a little bit more. Did, who, who made the decision, Bob, who was going to be the cameraman that day? Did uh, Roger always have the camera, or was that... Uh, well, yes, there was there was not a decision at all because I didn't have anything to do with cameras. Uh, basically, I was the horse person there. You right. know, on the, uh, Roger had, was riding his horse, but you know, I was just there to to help Roger whatever uh, whatever needed to be done. And my my uh, point was, or the reason that I was down there is Roger asked me to take him down there. And I had the equipment to take him down there with the truck and, the, and, and, and you know, the means to get him down there. And so Roger had the, the camera with him all the time. I, I never carried the camera ever because I don't even, I don't even take pictures to this day with a camera. So, and I know very little bit about cameras. Uh, so consequently, Roger had, had this camera, I assume, uh, quite a while before he went down there. Did, um, hmm. did, who, who made it? Okay, now I'll, again, we heard Bob Gimlin talking, and he says that Roger had a camera with him the whole time, okay? Now who filmed Roger Patterson? If Bob Gimlin did it. See, these are things that points out, just like in an interview, after Bob Gimlin made, you know, gave his answer, for about a few seconds there, the, I guess the person giving the interview didn't know what to say because he went, ah, uh, mm. And he had to think for a minute before he can actually ask him another question. But then after that, they started veering off to something else, okay? Because it was like it caught him off guard as long as anything else because we're sitting there looking at a film saying Bob Gimmon and Roger Patter was in there, was the only two there at that time. But then here we hear Bob Gimlin saying he didn't use the camera. He don't even use cameras even till this day. So who was filming Roger Patterson at that time? And then we hear again, like I said, from the other interview where Bob Gimlin will sit there and he says that it could have been a hoax. Okay. These are questions that, you know, come to mind and there's no answers to them. There's no answers to them whatsoever. Though, like I said, they'll pick Bob Hieronymus and his story, no matter what they say about it. They'll pick him to death over it. But when it comes to Bob Gimlin, they are not, not one of them would say anything to him or ask him these questions just to verify what is going on. Okay? That's why a lot of people don't understand it. When you do research, and if you're going to claim something is real, okay, you have to ask questions. You got to find the evidence to prove that it is real or if it's a hoax. Now, if they don't answer these questions and they throw up uh, answers like this in different times, okay, it starts making somebody think. It starts, you know, popping up red flags all over the place. But a lot of people won't take that in consideration. 
So I just want to make this video here and show two interviews of uh, Bob Gimlin talking about the Patterson and Gimlin Bigfoot film where he says it could have been a hoax. And he also said, you know, that he didn't have not, you know, he didn't use the camera. Roger had to come with him the whole time and he won't use it. And Bob Gimlin says that he don't even know how to work a camera to this day. So these brings up, like I said, questions. Who filmed Roger Patterson at Bluff Creek? If Bob Gimlin didn't. Why would Bob Gimlin say he's 100% positive that it was a real creature, but then he turns around and says, well, it could have been a hoax. Now, there's other interviews that Bob did where I could point out a lot, Bob uh, Gimlin did, that I could point out a lot of facts into it. Okay, just like it's already been told that, you know, Roger Patterson used somebody as a stand-in for Bob Gimlin. Okay, now supposedly his deathbed confession that he said sorry to Bob Gimlin over it. But we got to look at these things. The fact is, like, the other interviews that was given by Roger Patterson, and I guess this bogus <clears throat> Bob Gimlin was in real, because there's interviews where I could point out where uh, Roger Patterson told Bob Gimlin in that interview, you know, okay, Bob, don't say it that way because you're exaggerating. Like when he says um, the hands, in this one interview, Bob Gimlin says the hands of the Bigfoot, excuse me, something. There the hands of the Bigfoot was right down below its knees. Well, Roger Patterson says, now, come on, Bob, you know, you're exaggerating. And then and in another interview that John Green did with uh, Bob Gamlin, where he said, where Bob Gamlin was sitting there talking about Roger Patterson is, you know, making a big thing out of what it was, just like when they said he, you know, his horse fell over and stuff. He says, actually, Roger was exaggerating about that. His horse didn't really tip over, you know, fell on him. You know, these are things what I'm saying is like Roger Patterson is contradicting Bob Gimlin. Bob Gimlin is contradicting uh, Roger Patterson, you know, and they're both sitting there calling each other. They said they exaggerate in their stories. So there's a lot of things that came to my mind. And when I tried to contact Bob Gimlin over these things, you know, he wouldn't return my phone calls or anything else. But I have talked to other people, you know, Bob Ramos, Philip Morris, and all of them. I have talked to him on the phone and stuff. And they did answer my questions, okay? But if you want to find out more about this and all the other research I've done on the Patterson Gimlin Bigfoot film, you'll find it in my book called uh, Patterson and Gimlin Bigfoot Film 1967. It's on Amazon. It's on paperback and Kindle. So uh, I want to thank everybody. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Tell your friends about us. Thank you and have a nice day.